Uh, he credits Ollie Rad for a lot of the technology he developed. But this is pretty straightforward stuff. If you're familiar with modern, you've seen infect strategies before. This is a souped up version of the deck. The pump spells are substantially better in Legacy, most notably Invigorate and Berserk. Those two cards are super efficient rates. Additionally, together, they represent 10 points of damage with any one power creature. Because any. one plus four times two is 10. Another interesting dimension of this deck is the presence of Ink Moth Nexus alongside Crop Rotation. So the deck can theoretically kill from an empty board at, at the end of its opponent's turn into its own attack step. All right, so his opponent, Brendan Estrada, is on Bug Delver, a tempo deck that could be pretty good here. It doesn't have too much hard removal, so this could be a difficult matchup for him. Um, Right now, we just saw p players trade a couple lands right away. And on end step there, Alan went ahead and got a Tropical Island. Brendan's going to immediately wasteland it. I'm interested to see if that was on purpose here. You see Alan's hand, two more Tropical Islands. He may be having to play land drop for land drop when he's got nothing else to do. If so, it's a really good bait on Alan's side. And wastelands are pretty annoying for the Infect deck to play against. It's one of the cheap forms of interaction that can handle something like King Pop Nexus. Yeah, and if you don't know what your opponent's playing against, you'd be pretty tempted to waste a guy who mulled the six off something. But you're absolutely right. He, he managed to get a starter to waste something that was not an Ink Moth, which is, is a small victory for him. So now, Estrada hasn't played anything yet. He, remember, he is a tempo deck, so he's going to want to get something down there. His creatures are Tarmogoyf, Deathrite Shaman, Delver, Secrets, and a pair of Tomb Stalkers. Alan Wiles' deck, on, on the other hand, pretty straightforward set of Infect creatures, Blight Agent, Listener Elf, and Noble Hierarch as well. Yeah, those have been really the go-to cards. We have seen occasionally people play Iker Claw Mirror or Necropede. I believe both of those are in the deck that Tom Ross uses. None of those are in Alan Wiles' list, however. Sometimes they're cyborg cards, but... We'll see what he goes for. It's going to be a Tarmogoyf, but that's going to meet with a Daze and Dazed Back. Yeah, I do not believe that Alan floated mana there, so uh, Brennan was able to daze back. Yeah, had he floated mana, he would have been able to pay for that daze. I'm also not sure if it was even worthwhile for Alan to fight over that Tarmacoy. If you see his hand with two uh, blighted agents, he's got a Berserk and an Invigorate. To me, the fight has to be over a removal spell like, you know, something that can interact. This Tarmacoy is a pretty slow clock. Yeah, we see on Estrada's side, he's going to go ahead now him to Turok while. And six cards in his hand. So he's going to get a random two of them. This could be, could be pretty good. One through five. He gets a Berserk. And an Invigorate. So the, the two halves of the two-card combo both gotten. The Berserk's not too bad to get. It's actually Wild has a second Berserk. But that Invigorate, I have to assume, is going to hurt some. That was a big piece of the puzzle here for Wild. More also importantly is, up until now, Estrada probably assumed his opponent was also on Bug Delver. But now he, the, you know, now he knows a lot better. Although it appears that Wild has just top decked another Invigorate, so... Yeah, I believe it actually was a Might of Old Carosa. Ah. So... Can still and, uh, generate a combo kill alongside Berserk. Absolutely. Blighted Agent is the play for Wild. Will there be a Liliana or an Abrupt Decay or a Disfigure for it? We will see. In the absence, there, it looks like he does have an Abrupt Decay. He also has another Hymn to Turok. So he has to pick how much does he respect a combo kill here. A lot. He's not going for the him. He's just going to go for the abrupt decay. And I think that's good instincts here. It's hard to lose the game pacing it this way, but it's really easy to lose the game if you let Wile untap with one of his infect creatures. Yeah, I do think Wile has a replacement blighted agent. So he may have to hope to him away the combo next turn. Wile here, and this is something, I want to point out something you could have played around here. So he, you look, he drew force for the turn. He's going to make a blighted agent. And I believe he has two or three cards remaining in his hand. I believe it's just two. This him is way better because Wild played a forest. Yeah, he's going to lose everything here. And the cards he's losing are significant. Right. He could have shield. Yeah, he has Berserk and Might of Old Crosa. That was a two-card combo. And, yeah, Might of Old Crosa is pumps two plus, plus two plus two on their turn, plus four plus four on your turn. So that is a kill. That's, that's another or, one plus four times two. Yeah, sorry, it's, it's actually not turn. What is it? It's if you could have played a... So if you play it like it was a sorcery, yeah. then you get the four, four. So it's a little different than your own turn. That's... But similar. You have to have it Functionally on. very similar, though yeah. not quite the same thing. Yeah, with the, the faded cards in standard are like that, except that they say turn, so you can do stuff like 
you know, I can upkeep, cast a faded configuration at your face, and then I get my scry to. But you, with Might of Old Crowsay, you would not get the powered up version. Correct. So he's going to need some help. Blighted Agent is joined by another Blighted Agent. But Wiles down to eight. He's not winning this race right now. Yeah, he's way behind. And this deck is all about generating two cards. You know, you need two bomb spells. Ideally, it's something like Invigorate Berserk. And Alan does not really have two draw steps left. Ponder is the play for Estrada. He has one poison on him. I don't believe Wile has a draw that can get him enough poison next turn. Well, he may be able to chump block and then draw running a, a running sequence of spells. That's yeah. a possibility. Yeah, one of these agents is going, you're right, though, is going to have to chump block. Also, I believe Estrada has a follow-up Tarmogoyf, so if he does that, then Wild would have to double chump block, and I don't think he can afford to do that. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you have to play like, like Brennan has nothing. Any removal spell, any, even any additional creature is probably too much for Wild to overcome at this point. Yes, yeah, so we see that Tarmogoyf on play. It is a 4-5. Estrada's going to crack a fetch on here. He had a ponder, he shuffled and drew. So if he has a follow-up Tarmogoyf here, I think that's going to do it. Yep, he also has a daze. So even if Wild draws that pair of spells, it's going to be difficult for him. We do see the second Tarmogoyf, and he's not going to attack, though. That's very odd. I, I don't know if he's under the impression that he can block these Blighted Agents or what, but... Yeah, that gives <laughs> Wild another turn to draw another Blighted Agent. I, I think you just swing your two Blighted Agents in. Yeah, Brandon, a little bit of a, a miss there. He should still be fine, though. I think I think he's still ahead, though. There, right, next turn, he's going to have to chump here, so it still is like a... Estrada still has the game, I believe. Yeah, because I don't think there's any plus five effect. Yeah. So he plays a Tarmogoy a third Tarmogoyf, so he three Tarmogoyfs versus three Blighted Agents. This race is in the Tarmogoyf's favor. One of them gets chumped by a Blighted Agent. Wild will go down to four, I believe. And right now, this spring will only put Estrada to five poison. Yeah, I don't believe there's a plus five. And Pendlehaven certainly won't do it. So game one goes over to Brendan Estrada. I think this matchup is typically pretty good for Infect, but... When you aren't able to get out of the front foot and they're able to deploy their things like Abrupt Decay, like Lillian of the Veil, then uh, Bug Delver gets a pretty big edge there. Yeah, I mean, I, I tend to agree. Um, in, I mean, I would think that, like, this is a, a decent game for Infect. Um, there are a few decks that can play tempo with Delver, but I think Infect's mana costs are low enough that it may be able to do it. When I've seen... Infect struggle, it's against an overload of one mana reaction. Things like Source of Plowshares and Lightning Bolt, those are hard for the deck to overcome. Like Blue White Red Miracles, for example. Yeah. Tough or matchup. Delver, Umazawa Sute plus a lot of cheap removal. Abrupt Decay is more expensive and critically cannot target Ink Moth Nexus. So you need Wastelands to contain the Nexus and then cheap removal to contain the Infect creatures in the deck plus your own clock, and it's just asking a lot out of the Bug Delver deck, though Brennan was able to put that together that game. Yeah, like, one of the scary things, there's this one of copy of Disfigure in Estrada's main, and actually two more on the board, and I think once Estrada can board into those, this may go over, this will become a much harder matchup for a while. Yeah, right? it's, a, it's a huge a huge boon to have. I'm sure the Dismembers are in this deck board to fight other Tarmogoyf decks or what have you, but this is a matchup where it's it's really awesome to have access to that effect. All right, so going with... I have actually a question for you here. So looking at M15, we're seeing three Disfigures in this list, and I was curious whether or not we would see any players choose to cast Ulcerates over Disfigures. And it looks like the answer is no here. Well, for me, it's... What are the three toughest creatures that you're actually looking to fight in the format? It's interesting because you mentioned that because... You know, I've been debating whether or not you're supposed to play Searing Blaze versus Searing Blood in, in Burn, and I think the, the part of the argument for Searing Blood is that all the creatures you care about in Legacy are two toughness. Deathrite Shaman, Stoneforge Mystic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. After you get past that, most of the creatures you're talking about are larger. What are the critical three toughness creatures in Legacy? You're looking at Painter Servant, Sarah Avenger. I mean, it's a pretty short list of three toughness creatures that are significant. Two is the magic number. Two in is Legacy. the magic number, and then you, you're talking then about Tarmogoyfs and Tombstalkers and so forth, where you need something larger than that. So, 
if there was an influx of three times creatures that were significant or there were just more painter servants and, and more Sarah Avengers floating around, I could see an argument for this card. But the way the legacy metagame is shaped out right, shaping up right now, it's a lot of two toughness creatures or a lot of stuff much bigger than minus three, minus three handles. Yeah. It Al although in this match, I'm sure uh, our bug player would much rather have Ulcerate. Yeah, well, I mean, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that losing three life against Infect is not actually a drawback. I mean, a lot of this actually has to do with, see, you know, we don't, Dismember doesn't see much play in Legacy, even though that card is actually pretty similar to Ulcerate, right? You could just play it as one mana, minus four, minus four, you lose four life. Yeah. And it's the same card. And we don't really see that. We just see Dismem Disfigure as, because it doesn't lose life. Well, it's an interesting feature with, with Bug. I feel like the life total is more of a resource than people give it credit for especially once you're talking about adding cards like Dismember, you already have Thoughtseize in the deck, you already have your mm -hmm. Fetchlands in the deck, you have Force Wills in your deck. Individually, these cards don't matter very much, but the total sum is Bug plays games where it kind of just gets low on life and can get kind of picked apart in games it was otherwise winning. So uh, a card there that says pay three life on it, there needs to be significant rewards, and it's not clear the way the Legacy metagame is right now that it's a substantial upgrade over Disfigure. There was a lot of noise around Ulcerate, actually, and but to be fair, though, I don't... I think... People can underestimate just how much life three life is. You know, burn decks pay full value to, to make you lose three life, for example. They're, they're more than happy to lava spike you. So when you're doing it to yourself, like, that's on an, almost discard, like, that's not that far from discarding a card. It's a, it's a weird thing. There's a lot of people, uh, you know, I see this logic approach to all the time in Magic where basically I'm playing a matchup like Burn where, of course, my life total matters. I'm going to go out of my way to preserve it. Or my life total doesn't matter at all. And there's a lot of magic, even in Legacy, that gets played in the middle of that. Decks like De Death and Taxes and Rug Delver and, and other sorts of Delver decks, they're not explicitly burn decks, but you it, the games do come down to damage racing sometimes. Your life total is a resource, especially when you're uh, putting it on top of Force of Wills and Fetch Lands and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So uh, I, I think the metagame would have to have substantially more significant 3 times creatures before you saw bug players move to a card like Ulcerate. Yeah. It's actually one of the stark differences between Modern and Legacy is that uh, in Modern, like, the incremental damage you take from your lands in Modern is not irrelevant. Yeah. Um, you know, you can't just, like, shock every turn and just think that things will be okay. Yeah, for sure. All right, we're going to go back into our match, though. These players are still are shuffling for game two. We do have Brennan Estrada left, Alan Weil right, Infect and Bug Delver. Right now, Bug Delver up, up a game here. It is really kind of about, like, the cheap removal does seem to matter. It's interesting, Disfigure has become a card that's, like, it's kind of a black lightning bolt if you're looking for one. The two most important creatures, or if you had to summarize the, the formats, three most important creatures, what's your list? Stoneforge, Mystic, Delver of Secrets, Deathrite Shaman. And it kills them all. Right. There you go. It is, it is weird to see a format so powerful play what looks like a booster draft common. It always stands out in these lists, but it, it is the best removal spell black has access to to handle the most significant creatures in the format. Hey, it was a high pick in Zendikar Limited, though. It was really good in draft. It was yeah, really good in I draft. mean, I don't, they never really made it past fifth pick. Yeah, but it was Black's second best common. Right, but Glazing Glade Heart was also really good in draft, and it's not knocking down right. any doors in Legacy, so. That's true. To my knowledge. Neither is Hideous End, which was actually the best, I, in most people's opinion, better than Dis Disfigure. At it the was time. also, in my opinion, better than Disfigure. Yeah. They wouldn't, you know, Hideous End is like, you don't get removal like that in draft much anymore. That's like, like a common unconditional murder with drawback. Yeah, with with upside. They don't make them like they used to as far as that goes. They no. decide it's better to let people actually manifest their <laughs> synergies rather than the best draft decks always being blue-black, kill it, bounce all your stuff, and kill you with a generic flyer. Brandon Estrada on the, on the draw. He's going to keep seven. While is on six cards for the second game. Aaron Forsyth referred to it as, I believe, Gravedigger Divination Strategies, which were always, or not always, but very often the best thing to be doing in draft. You'd much rather be the guy casting the Doomblade than the guy casting the target for Doomblade. Yeah. So I like that draft is less the case like that now than it used to be. One of the things that I've actually, and I've thought about this a bit in drafting, which you see in M15, is I've liked how they aren't getting rid of removal. You know, we saw like in Abs and Restored how that can actually be problematic. When, yeah. you, when, you, when there's no good removal, things can really go bad. But, you know, so, so for example, in M15, say for like Black's the removal color, right? You have like some pretty good removal. You have... Uh, a Convoke, four mana, like you have Covenant of Blood, it drains for four. You have the five mana basic dark, you know, kill a creature, it can't regenerate. But it's, they've cost to them at the point where it's no longer like, a lot of games, you know, you'd ask, what's the best common in this color? You'd be like, oh, it's the kill spell, you know? And 
it's questionable now whether that is still true. Yeah, to me, it's about sort of density, too. Like, one really high-quality removal spell at common for a color may make the drive experience better, in fact. because Lightning Strike. Yeah. But having three cards as good at, li at Lightning Strike at common means that too much of the games are about just killing all of your opponent's stuff rather than doing proactive things. So I can't have Doomblade and Tendrils of Corruption and Merfolk Looter. Right. That, for example, I think even Doomblade at common is a mistake. So a lot of it also is just about saturation and density. All right. We are underway. Alan Wilde, turn one on the play with Ink Moth Nexus, and it's going to hit, get hit by Wasteland. And we're back on Alan Wilde. Hope, probably, I'm probably hoping to swing with that card. One's going to show the strength of Wasteland. He has a ton of lands here. He has his first three cards we can see are three fetch lands. But having that Aimbot Nexus get tagged there is really rough. That's one of his. That's the card in the matchup that's the hardest for Brennan to handle, though. He does have those dis, uh, dismembers that we alluded to before. Yeah, remember, you can't Abrupt Decay in Ink Moth Nexus even after it's been activated because it, Ink Moth, Abrupt Decay says non-land card. And now Alan, I believe, has no infect creatures left over. And Dismember is so nice in this matchup too, more so than Lightning Bolt is, or Disfigure rather, and the Dismember, or you said you has... Just as figure. Oh, just as figure. Still an upgrade over something like Lightning Bolt or Plow in the matchup because often what happens in the in the matchup is, you know, you try to play a removal spell. I probably try to put my guide, you remove it. In response, I invalidate your removal spell. You still at least get the minus two, minus two, which right. means that you can survive certain attacks. It's not like Lightning Bolt and Giant Growth, where when you bolt their guy in the Giant Growth, that you just lose everything. Right. So we had there, Brennan on his turn tried to make his own threat in terms of Delver of Secrets. Alan kind of flooded on lands, took that opportunity to daze the Delver of Secrets, at least keeping the board clean while he searches for another Infect threat. I think another really critical tool in this matchup for Alan is access to crop rotation, because Brennan plays so much on his own turn, he plays a lot of sorcery speed stuff, that crop rotation into Nexus and to kill you is a real line of play. And in fact, he may want crop rotation even more than he wants certain creatures in this matchup. Yeah. He does have a creature. This is Noble Hierarch. Remember, in the Infects deck, this is the one creature they play for of that is not an Infector. Mainly because, first of all, the card quality is pretty good, and it does pseudo Infects damage by pumping your Infectors. And the deck isn't all about combo killing either. There's plenty of games you play where, you know, you have a Pendle Haven and Noble Hierarch, and you're just chipping away. And if your opponent ever does, you know, makes a move to try to kill your guy, you can use your pump spells to save it. Yeah. And Brennan, kind of having that formula you mentioned where Infect has a problem with a, a survey of one mana cards. We see Brendan had a Delver on turn one. It got countered. That was fine. Next turn two, disfigured the Noble Hierarch and then played another Delver. So he's, you know, he has cast three cards off his first three mana. And as a result, he's ahead on the board right now. Or he's tempo-wise ahead of the Infect player. With Abrupt Decay left over in all of this too, so... He's really going to have to find a Nexus. Yeah, find Nexus. Hope the bug player does not have another disfigure or another way to get rid of it. And, and then he's, the problem is he still hasn't done any infect damage. You know, he doesn't seem to be able to stick a threat at all. Brainstorm comes from Estrada. He's going to try to reload with some kill spells as he waits around this Delver. I believe this is an upkeep Brainstorm because he wants to yep. guarantee the Delver flip. And going to go ahead, yeah, using the, the cards from Brainstorm to reveal a ponder that he's put on top of his deck. That ponder flips the Delver into Insectile Aberration. And Brandon's going to go ahead and continue here with what I believe may be another Delver. And it is. So a triple Delver start for Brandon. And then Alan was able to take out the first one, but the, the second one's already flying and hitting him in the air. And I have to mention off that Brainstorm, the third one is following in its tracks. But don't count Alan out of this game just yet. Crop Rotation can still steal this. He's going to see what he's up against. He casts the Jotaxian Probe. He sees Ponder, Misty Rainforest, and Tarmogoyf. Alan, cognizant of just how much damage these Delvers can do, opted to pay for the Jotaxian Probe with blue instead of punching himself for it. Plays Pendlehaven. Has the Legends Pendlehaven, too, which is how you can separate the casual Infect players from the from the pros. Well, there was, was it reprinted in one of the, in like, from the Vault Realms? Uh, it was or... in Time Spiral. Oh, okay, so it's not a time-shifted Pendlehaven. 
Right, right. It may have been in some from the vault, though I don't think so. But Okay, second Delver flips this time, too. Takes six. Allen is down to eight. That one's going to flip off that abrupt decay we've been mentioning. And Brennan, is, he's just going to go aggro here. Tarmogoyf joins the pair of Delvers. This is could be lethal. I mean, is lethal as soon as next turn. Yeah. It's far enough ahead that there is almost an argument for leaving back one of the insectile aberrations to protect him from a crop rotation, but also an argument made for just trying to get him dead. Yeah, we, card accidentally knocked off the top. Not a big deal. Judge corrects that play. Alan's going to get a creature on the board, but is it going to be enough? It's Blighted Agent. We do see a lot of pump spells. It looks like Vines of Vastward and Invigorate are in Alan's hand, but I, I just don't think he can do enough. Well, he's on chump block detail now. Right. It's Invigorate, Invigorate Vines of Vastwood. So it's possible if that Tarmogoyf stays at 4-4, four, four, at 4-5, I mean, Alan might th would think, yeah, it's going to get Abrupt Decayed, but he can give it Shroud with Vines, so that's fine. Uh, interestingly enough, had Brendan opted to Abrupt Decay it on his own turn, he could have gotten Alan Weil in this way because the Shroud would have stopped Alan from pumping. Well, I guess I, I was going to say he could have stopped it from being able to save itself. Yeah. You know, he blocks, Alan goes for the Invigorate, he goes for the Abrupt Decay, then Alan would have to go for Vines, but then his own Invigorate wouldn't work. So he'd have to dump all his Invigorates. Brendan makes a lethal swing here, but the Tarmogoyf is only a 4-5. Alan can invig block an Invigorate here to stay alive. He's going to go ahead and do that. Estrada will go up to, to an irrelevant 23. And now with four, four damage in hand, he needs a plus four on the attack next turn to survive. He can Pendlehaven it, Invigorate it, that's six. He's going to need four more. So he's going to need a Berserk or a Might of Old Krosa or an Invigorate or a Vines. Yeah, still very much alive. And that's, yeah, I think if Brennan had killed it on his own turn, he wouldn't have had this out. Yeah. But unless you're experienced playing against in fact, I don't think that's something you'd see right away by any means. And that looks like a Vendillion click cast here. Well, in response, he's going to go ahead and invigorate his own blight yeah. agent. I mean, you might as well just blank it. So well, there, there's a problem here. I think he, he needed to Pendlehaven in response to that. Yes, yeah, so that that puts the four outer. I mean, Berserk's still an out, but but it takes away the other outs. Correct, but the top card was Noble Hierarch, so it didn't end up on. How, that would have been one of those moments if he'd realize, like, say he flipped vines there, he'd yeah. look and be like, oh, oh, too bad. Yep. But as it is, Brennan Estrada wins two games to zero over Alan Weil. He's going to be moving on to 7-1, and one, possibly in top eight. Maybe needs one more win. We will see. But Alan Weil at 6-2, and two, he is done for the day. One more round to see if he can finish in the top 32. But